Hi, I'm Ed Bradley and I'm a Chesapeake Master Gardener and I'm here at the Chesapeake Municipal Center in Chesapeake, Virginia. We have a 1.1 mile tree trail through the middle of the campus and this is an interesting place because it's a well visited site as you would expect since it's the seat of city government in Chesapeake. But we have a uh, notable arboretum here. We have about 150 species plus of woody plants and so we put this tree trail in to give visitors and uh, employees alike a chance to learn more about the urban forest. Uh, our tree tour begins at the Great Bridge Community Center and we have a kiosk where we normally have brochures before the pandemic and we will be having them back soon but this was designed by the Parks Recreation and Tourism staff and it's an excellent brochure. It lists the 43 different uh, trees that are labeled and it mentions some specific information about bald cypress, our city tree, which we'll talk about later and it tells you some of the things to do here. So we want to start our tour with some pine trees and pine trees can be identified by their needles and also by their cones and sometimes by their size and habit. But this is an interesting pine tree, longleaf pine, Pinus palustris. This was a common tree in the southeast United States but now very few remain. So we were able to get some of these in our stock and have planted them in several locations in the city. But longleaf pine is just what it says. It has long needles, 8 to 18 inches long, in bundles of three. You can identify pines by the bundles, the number of, of needles in a bundle, and by the length of the needles. So this by far has the longest needles and is the easiest to identify of, of any of the pine trees. Longleaf pine also does something else very interesting. When it's young, they call it a grass stage. It looks like a clump of grass. This one has actually started to grow but it looks like a clump of grass in the grass stage and then it goes into the rocket stage which is this started this is starting to do after about five to seven years and then as it gets up to a certain height it will finally start to branch. Uh, longleaf pine were used for shipbuilding and for construction and only about three percent of the original forest in the southeast United States remains. Our next tree is loblolly pine pinus tita and this is by far the most common pine tree uh, in coastal Virginia. And this one has needles in bundles of three also, but notice the length of these is much shorter than longleaf pine. It's about usually about six to nine inches long. And in this case, because we have a mature tree, we have a lot of pine cones around here. The pine cones are usually about three to six inches long. And also they're fairly sharp. The prickles along the edge are fairly sharp if you grab one of these. So, this is an excellent tree for landscaping in Hampton Roads, for azaleas and camellias and other plants, but it does require some work because of the pine cones. The needles, though, give you some free mulch that you can use. Our next tree is uh, Virginia pine, Pinus virginiana, one of many plants in this area that have Virginia uh, in their botanical name. And this tree, uh, you can see, has much shorter needles than longleaf pine or loblolly pine and that's one way you can identify this. This has needles in bundles of two and they're twisted. So that's another thing that can give you a clue on identifying Virginia pine. They also have much smaller cones and we have a larger Virginia pine next to us with a bunch of cones up in the tree but those cones are about one and a half to three inches. So we've been looking at trees here in our Master Gardener garden and we have demonstration projects because part of what we do is teach the general public the things we know about horticulture. And you can see behind me here we have two rain barrels and some information about rain barrels and also a compost bin demonstration project. Nearby we have an outdoor classroom with benches where we've had a lunch and learn series uh, through the years. We're proud of our Master Gardener program here in Chesapeake. We have an excellent extension agent, Mike Andrzejczyk, and we have a lot of volunteers who do all sorts of things to make our community a better place. And at a certain point, if you get enough hours or if you have enough longevity, uh, we've created this Tree of Distinction Award uh, for some of our volunteers. Our next tree is Japanese apricot, Prunus mume, and this is an introduced tree. This is a tree from Asia, and what's remarkable about it is it's flowering now. It's late February. We're in 
plant hardiness zone eight, average minimum temperature 10 to 20, and this is when this tree blooms each year. So this is something to look forward to, a tree that blooms in mid to late winter. We're here in the main part of the Chesapeake Master Gardener Teaching Garden, and we have uh, two oak trees behind me here. And oak trees are some of the most important trees in the eastern United States. We're going to talk about four different oak trees today, and we're going to show you how the leaves can look very different. Most people, when they think of an oak tree, think of white oak, Quercus alba with the rounded lobes, classic oak leaf shape. But here's another oak, post oak. Notice the two prominent lobes in the very middle part, almost in a cross type pattern. This is Quercus stellata. So we have the Quercus stellata off to my right and the white oak behind me. Uh, white oaks are very important trees and can live to be 600 years old. Notice the leaves are hanging in there in late winter with these trees. They're in the same family as beech, which also has leaves that can kind of hang in there during the winter as a helpful identification feature. I'm here in front of the Virginia Cooperative Extension Office for our next tree, and this is willow oak, Quercus fellows, and you can see this is a very large tree. Actually, willow oak can get much larger than this. The co-national champion uh, is in the city of Chesapeake in the southern part of our city. So this is often used as a street tree, as you can see here. It's a good urban forest tree. It has narrow leaves, unlike the two leaves we saw earlier of post oak and white oak. It's a long linear type leaf with no lobes. Uh, but notice the difference. This is an oak and oaks have acorns. And this is a small acorn for such a big tree. Uh, and look at the leaf. This is a leaf, uh, it doesn't look like the post oak or the white oak, and it almost looks like a willow, like a weeping willow leaf. And you see the name willow oak, but it is not related. That's a common name that can mislead you. It is, it is actually an oak, as you can tell by the name Quercus. Uh, one thing you have to be aware of with willow oak is the size of the tree. Uh, it may not be a good tree for certain conditions because it's going to take up a lot of space. Our next tree is Chinese elm or lace bark elm, Ulmus parvifolia. And this is, as it says, in the elm family, it's related to our American elm, Ulmus americana. But unlike American elm, this tree is not subject to Dutch elm disease and in fact is a tough urban forest tree. And one of the best features of this tree is what you see right here in the wintertime, this very interesting bark. You can see why it's called lace bark this mottled bark with different colors, a little bit of orange and green and gray, all in one bark. We're here in front of City Hall for our next tree, Yoshino cherry, Prudus yetoensis. And this is one of the most beautiful of all the flowering trees. This tree blooms in the spring and has beautiful pinkish white flowers. And when they fall, they tend to fall all at once, almost just like it's snowing in the spring. Uh, some of these trees were donated to the United States in 1912 and were planted in Washington, D.C. And they're still there and, of course, some others that have been planted since as part of the Cherry Blossom Festival. Our next tree is one of our finest native trees. It's fringe tree, Chiananthus virginicus. This is an excellent native tree, especially for small properties. You can see it's sometimes almost shrub-like or it can be tree-like. It gets to be about 15 to 20 feet tall has beautiful pendulous sort of stringy flowers uh, in the spring. It really is a showstopper. This can be male or female. The female will have the fruit, but the flowers look similar whether you have a male or female. So if you want the fruit for wildlife value, uh, you can be sure you want to have a female. This fringe tree is located next to our Veterans Memorial. And you can see here, we have this beautiful memorial lined with evergreen shrubs. We also have a flag plaza behind us. And we have a ceremony here twice a year on Veterans Day and Memorial Day, a very moving service to be a part of. Our next tree is the fourth oak tree we're going to talk about today. And unlike the previous three, you can see that this tree is evergreen. And this is live oak, Quercus virginiana, one of the great trees of the world. It can live to be a thousand years old. And it grows in a narrow range here from southeast Virginia through the southeastern United States. In fact, it's the state tree of Georgia. 
This is a wide spreading tree. Unlike most trees that grow more vertical, this tree grows horizontally and is often easy to pick out in the landscape. And the city has planted quite a few live oaks through here, so as they age, they're going to be spectacular trees connecting with each other. So this is uh, live oak, uh, really a great tree of the coastal plain of Virginia. We're here on my favorite part of the tree trail, this brand new covered bridge that crosses over a small stream in this riparian forest buffer. And we have a nice stand of native trees here. And I think this is really a terrific thing for employees and visitors to be able to park over there and to go through a natural area like this when they're heading to City Hall or to the other buildings here at the Municipal Center. And we have about seven native trees identified uh, next to the trail, but you can also see them deeper into the forest here. It's also a good place for bird watching. You can come in here and uh, listen to songbirds and see songbirds and, and have a bit of respite from the busy activities of the Municipal Center. Our next tree is my favorite tree that also happens to be the city tree of Chesapeake. This is bald cypress, Taxodium disticum. And you can see here, this is a deciduous conifer. It's February, so this is one of the few conifers that is not evergreen, that loses its needles. And it's a beautiful tree, can live to be over 2,000 years old. We used to say 1,600 years old, but some other trees have been discovered in North Carolina that are over 2,000 years old. So this is a long-lived tree. It can grow in varying conditions. Uh, it actually can grow in standing water. So this is a great tree if you're planting in a wet spot. And in fact, this was a wet spot here. There's a standing puddle of water over there, and we often have rain that settles here. So uh, the previous tree that was here did not like wet feet, and this bald cypress does. So this tree is doing very, very well in this location. Bald cypress is also famous when growing in wet or even in the water for having these knees, these conical shaped knees that can be very tall. So if you see knees and you're in a swamp or some similar area, you know there's a bald cypress right there because it comes off the roots of the tree. We're here at the end of our tree tour today behind City Hall and we have these love letters which are part of the Virginia is for Lovers campaign. And these were made out of loblolly pine, Pinus teeter, one of the first trees we talked about today by a chainsaw artist. And all of these images here exist in Chesapeake. We have black bears. We have a great blue heron, which is our city symbol. We have river otters, and we have a blue crab. So this is Courtyard Square Park. We had festivals, food trucks, movies, games for families. Hope to have those back. So there's plenty of things to see and do here at uh, Chesapeake Municipal Center. And we hope you get a chance to come out and take advantage of it. I'm Ed Bradley, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the trails.